I've retouched Mother 2000 images this year. And a friend sent me his image on Instagram and asked me to actually do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I actually retouch this image. So this is the one I retouched and sent to him. And this is the real file. So in this video, I want to show you a step-by-step -step process on how I retouch this image from start to finish. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the raw image inside of Capture One. So it doesn't matter if you're using Capture One or Lightroom or Camera. The first thing you have to do is to actually process your raw files. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I feel the exposure of this image is looking okay. So I'm just going to open up the shadow areas. So I'll come to my high dynamic range inside of Capture One and just come to my shadows and just open up the shadow a little bit like this. And also, I feel the highlights on the forehead is too much. So if I assume you can see the highlight on the forehead, so I'm just going to take down the highlights from the forehead a little bit. So I'll come to the highlights and just take down the highlights just like this. That is works for me. Now this image is looking good already like this. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to even out the skin tone. Now to do that, I'm just going to come to my layer and mask right here inside of Capture One. And just click on select subjects now capture one will automatically select our subject for us if i just press m on my keyboard we are going to see the selection so right now it's selecting both this chair and the cloth so i don't want it to affect the cloth and the chair or the background i just want it to affect only the subject so to do that i'm just going to remove that selection from the clothes so i'm going to come to my remove tool right here click on ai remove and just make a selection of the clothes just remove it also select this part remove it select this part remove it so anywhere i want to remove i'm just going to make a selection of those particular place and just remove them also i'll remove the selection from the hair also you can also use the normal brush tool so if i just bring this normal brush tool i can just paint on anywhere i want to remove the selection from and it will automatically just remove the selection from that particular place right and if you want to add a selection click on this brush icon and just add a selection just like that all right so right now only our subject is selected i think i still want to remove the selection from the lips all right so i'll pick my remove tool again this ai remove and just click on the lips and just remove that selection now i want to pick my normal brush tool and see if i can remove the selection from the makeup because i don't want it to affect the makeup so i'll pick my normal brush tool and just reduce my brush size by clicking on the square bracket key and just remove that selection from the makeup just like that so this is going to be a detailed tutorial so pay close attention also remove it from the areas. just like that i want it to affect only the skin tone so i'm going to remove it from this jewelry as well now right now you can see only the skin is selected now i'm just going to refine the mask just to make everything blend so to do that i'm going to click on this empty place right here on this subject's mask once i click on it you're going to say refine mask i'm going to click on refine mask and just click on apply right here and just going to feather the mask and just make everything blend all right next i'm going to do i'm just going to hide that mask by pressing m on my keyboard and once i hide that mask i'm going to come with my color once i come with my color on that color editor i'm going to see skin tone just use this picker tool and just select any part of the skin i want the rest part of the skin to look like so i want the rest part of the skin to look like this part right here so i'm going to sample this part as a reference once I set up that part as a reference, I'm going to scroll the way down under the uniformity. I'm going to move the uniformity up like this. Also, move the saturation up like this. And also, move the lightness up like this, just a little bit. And that. So, let's see the before and after. So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. And from there, I'm just going to open this thing inside of Photoshop and just do this skin retouching. And to do that, I'm just going to right click. Click on edit suite, and just click on Photoshop right here. And I'm using PSD, I'm using system bit, I should say profile is on RGB, and I'll uh, just leave the rest settings like this. So these are the default settings that comes with Capture One. And just click on edit rights. And this image is going to open inside of Photoshop and we can start doing this skin retouching. All right, now when this image open inside of Photoshop, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J if I'm using the Windows. And I'm just going to remove the blemishes from this image. Also, I'm going to do micro dodge and bond on this image. And also just do global dodge and bond. But I'm not going to be doing it manually. I have an action for it. But if you want to do it manually, you can watch this video right here to learn how to do micro dodge and bond. And also you can watch this video right here to learn how to remove blemishes from your image. 
I'm going to do it automatically because I want to save time. So I'm just going to go to my action right here. I already have an action for it. I'm going to click on retouch for me right here. Once I click on this retouch for me, it will automatically remove the blemishes on me on my image. Also, it will automatically do my micro dodge above for me, as well as do my global dodge above for me. I try to remove any IVs so you have on your eyes. All right, that's when it's loading. Let's quickly see the before and after. So, see the before and the after. Let me just zoom in. You can see how good the image is looking already. The before and the after. And if you need this retouch for me, if you use the link shop, you're going to get 20% off any purchase you make. But I would recommend you get this retouch for me if you're actually making money off photography or retouching because it's quite expensive. All right. So after that, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing you know, Ctrl Shift Alternate E or Command Option Shift E. Once I do that, I'm going to come to my filter and I'm going to come to a real blum application. I'm going to click on real blum retouch. And this real blum retouch will just enhance the image and just make it look even more better. And if you use the link shop below again, you're going to get seven days free trial for this real blum. And if you like it, you can actually purchase it. All right. So let's just wait for Reblom to do its thing and you are going to see the before and after. Now, I always advise you to get something to make your workflow easy and faster. So that's why I have all these applications and I'm actually recommending it to you because it's what I use on a daily basis. So we have two options right here. We have the natural, we have the fashion. Let's see the, let's see the result for the natural. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. I feel the result of the natural is looking good, but let's try the fashion and see the result for the fashion as well. And I see the result of the fashion. I think the fashion looks better for me. So, see the before, the before, and the after. The before and the after. So, for here, I'm just going to reduce this general a little bit and just hit OK. Now, I'm just going to group everything so you can see where we started from and where we are right now before we continue. See where we started from. You can see the image. Take a look at the image. And this is the after. Even without doing focus separation, the before and the after. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to roll focus separation. And just try to smoothen out this transition right here. You can see this harsh shadow right here. I'm looking to use sugar separation to smoothen it out. Also, maybe some part of the skin, I'm just going to mix the colors right there with frequency separation. As to that, I'm going to come to my action. And by the way, if you need my action, I will leave the link again my action for free in the description below of this video. So click on focus separation 16 bits because this image was 16 bits. You remember I capture one. Now I'm just going to use focus separation blur radius of four for this image and hit OK. Alright, so next I'm going to do. I'm going to close this action, pick my mixer brush tool, make sure clean brush after stroke is selected, and also make sure clean brush is selected from here. My weight is on 30, my load is on 30, my mix is on 90. It doesn't really matter, you can leave it at any uh, number you want. My flow is on 20, sample wall layer is selected because I'm working on this brush layer, which is an empty layer. Please, you guys should pay close attention because you're going to learn a lot. Alright, now after that, I'm just going to zoom in. Add my high texture layer right here. Once I click on this icon, I'm just going to hide it. And once I hide it, I'm just going to push on this part right here. I'm just going to increase my brush size to my scroll bar three. So remember to increase and decrease your brush size according to the parts of the image you are working on. So if you want to work on a small portion of the image, use a small brush size. If you want to work on a bigger portion of your image, use a big brush size. All right? So I'm going to push on this part right here, just like this. Just so smooth and loud starts particular place right there all right also brush on the knuckles just to make uh just to remove those dark knuckles right there just make everything blend all right so i'm not going to do too much of focus separation because i don't want the image to look too smooth and too plastic so i'll come to this part right here again and just paint on this place just to smoothen out that harsh transition between that shadow right there and the mittens right there okay see the before and the after so like this works for me now not that now that i'm going to do i'm going to zoom in on this hand and just paint on this hand right here on the knuckles on the hand just to blend everything just like so right so i'm not doing too much of focus separation because i've already do my code jumper with the real blum and the touch of me so the image is looking smooth already all right so let's see the before focus separation and after focus separation, looking so much better. Now, next I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a stamp symbol layer and just crop this image. So press on Ctrl Shift and it's E or Command Option Shift E, create a stamp symbol layer. So to crop this image, I'm going to pick my crop tool, click on ratio, change it to uh, four by five and just switch it to five by four and just crop it landscape like this. So I'm going to frame this the way I want. So I think 
like this actually works for me i want to change this from background to content aware and just click on ok now after that next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to color grade this image inside of camera raw and also try and just make those parts that are looking too dark more bright just like that so i'll come to my shoulder and just come to camera filter once i come to camera filter first thing i'm going to do i'm going to scroll the way down i like doing this so i come to my calibration under the blue primary i'm going to move the saturation up for the blue primary like this like this works for me and this thing i'm going to do i'm just going to come to my mask right here i'm going to click on masking i'm going to pick this brush tool right here. once i pick this brush tool i'm just going to paint on this part right here on this hand and also paint on this part right here just to brighten it up just a little bit like so so once i do that once i make that selection i'm going to come to my exposure and just take the exposure up just a little bit like this so you can see those parts right there are now bright so before and after and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to create a linear mask so i'm going to click on linear gradient right here and just move it up like this and from here i'm just going to take the exposure up just to brighten those particular place a little bit because i think the light doesn't fall on those planes so i'm going to brighten it up just a tiny bit like this and let this work for me so see the before and the after the before and the after and one more thing i'm going to select the hair so i'll click on creating mask click on select people and i'm going to click on the hair right here so right now the hair is just going to be selected i'm going to click on create mask and from here i'm just going to take the texture down a little bit for the hair just to make the hair softer like this and also take down the saturation of the hair just to make it black like so and just come up a little bit and just move the blacks inside a little bit just like this like this works for me so see the before and the after and the last thing i'm going to do i'm just going to cut my vibrance and just add vibrance to this image vibrance to the image just like this the colors looks good already so i'm not going to change the color the color is looking good so let's see the before and after so this is the before and the after and from here i'm going to click on ok and back to photoshop now the final thing i'm going to do for this image is to just use liquify to fix this part right here so i create the stamp symbol there again command option shift e control shift alternate e then come to filter come to liquify right here what i enter liquify i'm just going to zoom in a little bit pick this warp tool right here this forward warp tool this first one right here and just push this part inside a little bit like this now these are my settings um, my pressure is on 4 so just push this part inside a little bit or any part of your image which you want to liquefy just push it in just like this alright so let me just zoom out alright so like this works for me and um, maybe move this part with the hair inside a little bit ok so just take your time to arrange your image and just do it like that so let this work for me so I'm going to click on ok now for the liquify, let's see the before and after. So, see the before and the after. The before and the after. Now the final thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to whiten the eyes. So I'll come to my action again. Click on eyes that take white me right here. Zoom in and just paint white on the eyes. Just like this. Do the same thing for these other eyes. Just like this. And so, now right now, if you can see, I made a mistake right here. So I'm going to press X and just remove it from that particular place and just make sure my painting is accurate all right so i'm going to reduce the opacity as well because i think it's too much then this works for me so see the before and the after so let me just go back with like this so you can actually see where from and where we are right now so this is where we started from and where we are where we started from and where we are so if you want to watch more tutorial check out this playlist right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative